caving, splunking, and potholing are all names used for the recreational activity of exploring extreme cave systems. This adventurous pastime is not only physically challenging and sometimes dangerous for the participant, but it can also be excruciating to watch if you are claustrophobic. Just the thought of being stuck 200 feet down in a cave, trapped in a tight space with no fresh air, can be triggering, with many left wondering what drives people to engage in this potential life-threatening hobby. In this video, we look at Splunkers, who have filmed themselves in the tightest of spots, but it comes with a couple of warnings. Firstly, do not participate in extreme caving unless you have the proper equipment and are accompanied by experienced guides. Secondly, if you suffer from claustrophobia, it is probably better that you do not watch this video. If you're ready to take on the challenge, then hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Now, before we begin this video, we just like to say a very special happy birthday to David. Thank you so much for watching the videos, and we hope you have a great weekend. Darren Keelai Ogofi Darren Keelai is one of several cave systems in the Langattuck Escarpment near Crickenhowell in South Wales. The cave was discovered in 1957 and is one of the longest cave systems in the country and parts of it are not for the faint-hearted. With its insanely tight crawls and daunting names such as the Vice, the Armageddon and the Death Squeeze, it's only extreme adrenaline junkies who would dare to attempt it. Keith Edwards and his caving colleagues first ventured into the cave in April 2010. Take a look. Since that first visit, they have returned several times, and here is one of the group attempting to squeeze through the vice. Not something we'd be signing up for, would you? stuck. This next footage shows the terrifying moment a potholer becomes stuck in Lost John's Cave on Leckfall in Lancashire, England. It shows Bob Johnson struggling to free himself as freezing water engulfs him. Take a look. Thankfully, other cavers managed to help him, and although bruised and shaken, Bob was unhurt. He later said, I won't be doing that again. I was like a cork in a bottle. Dan Sedron Dan Sedron's YouTube channel has been active for some years. He mainly reviews tech equipment and films himself and his friends during various adventures. However, every now and then, he does a bit of extreme caving, and in this video, which contains a claustrophobia warning, he takes a solo trip to Warsaw Caves in Ontario, Canada. A group of caves that contain long, tight passages and areas that are accessible to adventurous spelunkers. Take a look. Actually, if there was a day to do something in the rain, this is it. That's bone. That's a fossil. That looked incredibly tight, and to do that alone is probably not recommended. Rescue Gone Wrong This next clip is horrific and has a very sad backstory. In January 2002, Dave Shaw, a highly ranked technical deep diver specialist, decided to retrieve the body of a fellow diver, Dion Dreyer, who had lost his life in Boas Mansgat, South Africa, 10 years earlier. Dave was determined to bring Dion's bones back to his family for burial, but it wasn't going to be easy in one of the world's deepest freshwater diving holes, 271 meters down. The recovery operation was recorded by the diving team with an underwater camera. The dive starts well, and Dave found Dion's body without problem and hooked a line to it so he could bring it to the surface. But he ran into difficulty when the body unexpectedly began to move away as the skeleton within Dion's wetsuit had turned into a soap-like substance 
called Adipocea, which floats. Dave desperately tried to retrieve it, but eventually gave up and started his ascent. But as he swam up, his light got snagged on the line he'd attached to Dion's body. Dave desperately tried to free himself, but the lines had become entangled, and the physical effort of trying to free himself caused Dave to eventually pass out. Sadly, he died under the water, next to the body he tried to save. This video of the recorded footage is narrated by his diving friend, Don Shirley, who was his support diver that day, and who also nearly lost his life trying to save his friend. Three days later, both of the bodies were pulled to the surface as the dive team retrieved their equipment. Dave's death has been profiled in a number of documentary films, including the 2020 documentary called Dave Not Coming Back. Tight squeeze at Deep Cave. Trying to squeeze through the smallest entrance into Deep Cave in Edwards County, Texas, without any specialist equipment is not the best idea, but this group of friends did just that, some attempting to enter the tiny hole head first. This video went viral over 10 years ago. Take a look. The shoulders are getting through. Mm -hmm. There he goes. He's pulling. Dude, he's head first, holy cow. Push a little. That ass is going to be tough, everybody else goes through the other way. <laughs> Shove that in there. So ass is in the... <laughs> Shove down. Imagine struggling to get in that hole, then being stuck in there, panicked, and not able to get out. Foolish or brave, you decide. Robbie Phillips. Robbie Phillips is a Scottish pro rock climber who documents his extreme climbing adventure on his self-named YouTube channel. After watching some of his videos, it's safe to say he is a brave man. However, when faced with the claustrophobic tight spaces of caving, even the bravest can be caught off guard. Take a look at Robbie's first venture into the Knott's Cave 2 caving system in the Yorkshire Dales, England. Robbie described the crawl as the most claustrophobic experience of his life, although it hasn't completely put him off trying it again. Wookie Hole Wookie Hole Caves are a series of limestone caverns on the southern edge of the Mendip Hills near Wells in Somerset, England. They have been used by humans for around 45,000 years, and today are a popular tourist attraction and also a place used to mature cheddar cheese. As a tourist attraction, the cave is notable for the Witch of Wookie Hole, a roughly human-shaped stalagmite that legend says is a witch turned to stone by a monk from Glastonbury. It is also the place where the first cave dives in Britain took place in the 1930s, undertaken by Jack Shepard and Graham Balcombe. Since then, divers have explored the extensive network of underwater chambers although the full extent of the cave system is still unknown. In 1981, a trainee diver lost his life during a dive in the caves, after he lost his mouthpiece in one of the chambers. Take a look at this incredible footage of what it's like to dive in the enclosed cave system of Wookie Hall, courtesy of Chris Jewell. Now we scuba dive, but I don't think you'll catch us down there anytime soon. Tight squeeze. This video was filmed in a cave in southern Germany, and it certainly isn't for those who get claustrophobic watching people squeeze through tight spaces. But if you've made it this far into the video, then you're either not claustrophobic or just crazy. Some of the rocks are so tight, you can't even turn your head or fully breathe in to get through them. And because there is also water at the entrance, if you don't wear a proper wetsuit, being cold and wet deep in the cave system could result in death, as a rescue mission is unlikely to be successful if you get stuck. Prepare yourself and take a look.
Jacob Calvin Hikes. We couldn't make this list without featuring Jacob Calvin Hikes, a YouTube channel dedicated to some of the most extreme caving you'll ever see. Calvin and his teenage nephew Jacob take on some of the tightest squeezes imaginable around Oregon and Washington. The channel never reveals their exact locations in the tightly protected cave system in the regions, mainly to protect inexperienced hikers and cavers from trying to find them. The channel's aim is not to encourage viewers to participate in a potentially dangerous activity, but rather to inspire them to follow their dreams. The videos come with a warning about not attempting some of the crawls they do unless an experienced guide is present. In some of the videos, you can see the pair struggling to fit through the narrowest gaps, sometimes removing clothes to get through. Here is just a short compilation of some of those terrifying videos we've seen on their channel. Oh, this is weird. This is a weird spot. Ah. So I'm gonna drop into this hole. Ah! There we go. It's full of spiders, but but I'm pretty sure you're gonna want to go in there. Nutty Putty. You've probably already heard about the tragic demise of John Jones, and we have covered it before on this channel many years ago. But in case you haven't, we'll end this video with a devastating reminder of what could go wrong when you go caving. At age 26, John Edward Jones was in the prime of his life. He was married, had a one-year-old daughter, and was attending medical school in Virginia. In November 2009, John and his brother Josh decided to explore Nutty Putty Cave a notoriously tricky hydrothermal cave formation, located just west of Utah Lake. The brothers had been keen cavers as children, and wanted to revisit their childhood adventures. They weren't alone, nine other friends and acquaintances had joined them. The group set off on the evening of November 24th. About an hour into the expedition, John and a couple of others decided to find the Nutty Putty Cave Formation, known as the Birth Canal a very tight passage that experienced cavers needed to carefully crawl through. It had been years since John had been in a cave, and at six feet tall and 200 pounds, he wasn't a little kid who used to easily crawl into caves with his father. Despite this, John pushed on, entering the narrow opening head first, and carefully shuffling along using his hips, stomach and fingers. However, it soon became apparent that he was stuck. He had squeezed in so tightly, he had no room to turn around, and no room to back out. He tried to push on, but he just made things worse. He was stuck in a space that was barely 10 inches across, and 18 inches high. Josh was the first to find John, and tried to pull his brother out by grabbing his legs. However, this made things worse, and John slid down into the passage even further. His arms were now pinned beneath his chest, and he couldn't move at all. All the brothers who were devote Mormons could do at this point was pray. Josh called for help, but because John was trapped 400 feet into the cave and 100 feet below the surface, getting rescuers, equipment and supplies down that far took over an hour. The first rescuer to reach John was a woman named Susie Motola, who arrived just after midnight on November 25th. By this time, John had been stuck for three and a half hours. All Susie could see was a pair of navy and black running shoes. Time was running out for John. The downward angle at which he was trapped was putting huge stress on his body, and his blood was struggling to pump around. He began having difficulty breathing. At one point, rescuers brought a two-way cable radio into the cave and managed to lower it to John so he could speak to his wife. They were both understandably upset, but able to comfort each other. Over the next 24 hours, more than 100 rescue workers tried to free John, but after everything failed to budge him, they decided to use a system of pulleys and ropes. They tied John to a rope connected to a series of pulleys. When everything was in place, they pulled as hard as they could, working in an eight-man tandem. John was at times in great pain, but slowly but surely he started to move, until he was finally high enough to make eye contact with one of his rescuers. They even managed a short conversation. John was almost out. Then suddenly, without warning, one of the pulleys failed after coming loose from its anchor point in the cave wall. The entire team fell backward as the rope suddenly went loose. 
Once the dust had settled, the rescuers realized John had slid right down the crevice again, this time seemingly even deeper than before. There was now no hope of rescue, and John's heart could take no more after hours of strain due to his downward position. Sadly, John was pronounced dead of cardiac arrest shortly before midnight on the evening of November 25th, 2009. Rescuers had heroically spent 27 hours trying to save him. His family thanked them for their help, despite the tragic news. After John's death, officials sealed off Nutty Putty K for good. They never recovered his body, which remains inside to this day. John's family had a plaque put on the entrance of the cave in his memory, and Nutty Putty Cave now serves as a natural memorial and gravesite to John Edward Jones. In 2016, filmmaker Isaac Halasima produced and directed a full-length feature film about the life and failed rescue of John Jones, called The Last Descent. It gives an accurate and terrifying insight into the ordeal John suffered, and is well worth a watch. So that's it for this video. If you're claustrophobic and made it all the way to the end, then we commend you. Let us know if you want to see more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.